if I walked into that room and started immediately trying to sell everybody something, I promise you there would be this 10 foot bubble around me as I walked, as I walked over to get a snack or to get a drink or to talk to somebody, there would be this bubble because the word on the street in the room would be Caleb's trying to sell something and instantly everybody's gone. Yeah. The problem is we go to, we go to social media, we go to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever. And we try to do that and we make this big fat bubble. Even the social media says, uh, we're not going to let people see that because it's, that's yeah. not what, why they're here. People scroll right past it. And then Instagram goes, you're out. You're out. We're not giving you the yes. time of day. Welcome to the Maven Marketing Podcast. Today is Maven Monday. This is the place where we answer your real life marketing questions so you can eliminate waste in advertising, grow your business and achieve the big dream. In case you haven't figured it out already, I am not Brandon Welch. I'm Caleb Agee, and today I've slid over to the host chair, and we've brought a ringer. The captain of copy, the prince of production, <laughs> the one and only Carter Bro. Let's give him a hand. Yeah. That's quite the intro. It's yeah, good. I'm gonna, I told you I was going to give you the most hype intro you've ever had in your life. That's true. Did we get it? I think so. Fun fact, I actually, up until... 2008, 2009, I actually was the one and only Carter Bro in the world. Wow. I was the first person that had ever had that name. That's crazy. Yeah. Now there's like four of us. There's a bunch of young folks wow. that uh, kind of stole my title. They but. stole it. The weird fact, there's also a Caleb Ag in Seattle. And he does design and marketing and photography. Really? It's like my, my doppelganger, you know, mm. on the West Coast. So you should team up. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I added him on Facebook all those years ago, just for fun. I was like, hey, hey, buddy, we got the same name. So today, we've got a very, very practical episode, jam-packed with tips, tricks, and tools. Carter, tell us what we're digging into today. Yeah, we're uh, talking about social media tools and posting and how to use it uh, for your small business. Yeah. Um, you know, what to post, the best practices, how to engage with your audience on platforms like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, or X, Snapchat, LinkedIn, Slam Dunk, Scissor Kick, Ping Pong. I made a couple of those up. But, um, <laughs> you know, the, the, the list seems to go on and on. It and really we're just does. Kind of trying to help provide some clarity on uh, how you can use these tools to engage with your audience as effectively as possible. Yeah. So you, if you've been in business for more than a day, you've known that social media was kind of an expected part of your business strategy, right? Mm -hmm. It goes right up there with I need a name, a logo a website and my social media pages, mm -hmm. right? You probably yeah. have your social media pages up before the website, I would, in, in a yeah. lot of cases. So um, once they're up, the question becomes, what do I post? And we're gonna cover that and a lot more in this episode. So hang on tight. We're gonna just, we're gonna fly. We're gonna give you a lot of tip, tips and tricks here. So um, just to be clear, before we get into it, we're talking today about organic posting. So that mm -hmm. is the unpaid version of a post on whatever, whether it's the real or fake social medias that Carter just listed. <laughs> uh, I'll let you pick, figure out which ones uh, were real and which were fake. If, but, if you want to do paid posting on uh, scissor kick, let me know. I'll, I'll take your money. Yeah. 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 We're, uh, we're going to start a Kickstarter for three different new social medias yeah. just for fun. So um, first of all, before we go into anything in marketing at all, our goal is to Step back in the Maven method, we always start with strategy. Mm -hmm. So the order is strategy first, message is second, media is last. So when we, when we say social media, we are, guess what, talking about media. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to stop and go back to the top and say, what's the strategy? What are we trying to make happen? A lot of business owners, a lot of businesses think that they can use their social media for some sort of ac like customer acquisition tool, get sales, get get people to follow you, like you, and then somehow they'll start buying. Um, but the reality is that if they don't follow you already, they probably aren't seeing your post. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, and if, even if they do follow you statistically, uh, it's a very low percentage of those that will engage with that post. And we're going to talk about very specific stats on that here in just a minute. So especially if you're just trying to sell, that's when you really lose everybody. And so you are an above average marketer. And you are going to use the tools that we talk about here to make your social media 
pop for your business. Mm -hmm. And what social media really should be is a tool for yesterday customers. Yeah. Talking to people that you've already done business with, you've already interacted with, yeah. and using it as, um, a, your goal should be to bring added value, extra support, a tribal bond with those people that already know who you are. And um, at, at its core, it's customer engagement. It, it's a yeah. PR tool. Yeah. And um, you're staying connected with these people and you're staying their preferred option for your service. Mm-hmm. And when the time comes, they'll either come back to you or they'll recommend you to a friend. Yeah. You know, word of mouth is the strongest advertising you can have. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think that's, if there's nothing you take away from this episode, it would be, you can sell sometimes, but more often than not, it's just the same thing we've been saying in, in a lot of different ways. You have to build a relationship. Mm -hmm. You have to build a connection, a friendship of some sort with this customer. And if you only are selling, you're going to lose every day. Um, yeah. And even the media supports that. They, they, they penalize you if that's the case. So knowing that, um, we need to talk to you about what your social posts are capable of doing. And we even have some very specific stats uh, that Carter's going to read for you here. Yeah. So in 2023, the average engagement for an organic Facebook post ranged from 2.58% down to just 1.52%. That's for a personal profile post. That's a picture of your newborn child is getting that kind of engagement. Yeah, so of all of your friends, 2.5% mm -hmm. at the most are engaging with the, you, the best picture the on thing. the best day, yeah. right? Um, and that's, that's for your personal page, mm -hmm. your mom's post on of her granddaughter mm -hmm. or something like that. And for businesses, it's down to 0.07% engagement. Goodness. So it's, it's incredibly tough to get that engagement and, you know, doing whatever you can to optimize it uh, goes a long way. So yeah, the, th those are the stats for Facebook, um, but those principles apply to every platform in some way. Mm -hmm. um, more posts are being made by more users than ever on social media. And so everyone's getting less reach and you're fighting against a lot of other people and posts yeah. for attention. Yeah. So that that's the saturation of social media has grown so tremendously because there are new users added every single day and those users start posting. Mm -hmm. And if you think about that, it just makes the pie slices even smaller and smaller and smaller. So what ha what used to be even a year ago is just not the same. It's it's constantly going down and as far as where your post is going to go. Yeah. And uh on most platforms um, Instagram is the, one of the only ones that claims that this is agnostic, but most platforms you have to have a personal, like a person page or a business page. Um, Instagram claims that, that there's no real difference. Although some people have done studies and still show that business pages statistically do a little bit worse, mm. um, when that's the case. So, um, you are a business and you're fighting an uphill battle. Um, so they have all these platforms have very little interest in pushing your offers to somebody's newsfeed, but what they are interested in doing is creating this engaged, authentic conversation. It's that friendship. It's that relationship that we're talking about. And so, um, if you just think about, if you go to a party, right? Um, if you go to a party and you, it's a group of people you've never really hung around, you know, just, which is probably Carter and I's worst nightmare, right? <laughs> just. Yeah. Go into this group of people. How you, do I interact how do in I, this room? What's going know. on? And you, you, you're probably going to walk in and the first five minutes, all you're doing is trying to read the room. Mm -hmm. What's, what is the vibe in here? Is it a lively bunch? Is it, um, a professional environment? Is everybody like, you know, how do they look? How are they dressed? How are they talking? How do they communicate? Is it little, little pockets of people or is, mm -hmm. or is it everybody together? You know, you're trying to understand that room. And you will bring your authentic self. You're not going to necessarily change who you are for that, for that room, but you want to bring yourself in a way that fits into the room, right? Yeah. And if I walked into that room and started immediately trying to sell everybody something, I promise you there would be this 10 foot bubble around me as I walked, as I walked over to get a snack or to get a drink or to talk to somebody, there would be this bubble because the word on the street in the room would be Caleb's trying to sell something and instantly whew, everybody's gone. Yeah. 
the problem is we go to we go to social media, we go to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever, and we try to do that and we make this big fat bubble. Even the social media says, uh, we're not gonna let people see that because it's that's yeah. not what why they're here. People scroll right past it and then Instagram goes, You're out. You're out. We're not giving you the yes. time of day. Yes. So you want to not be that guy or gal in the room, in the party, and you want to read the room and think about the room is the media. Mm -hmm. The room is what platform am I on? Why are people here? Mm -hmm. What are they looking for? Um, and how, how do they, like, what are they trying to engage with? Right. Yeah. If it's your mom on Facebook, I'm just going to keep going to your mom. Cause that's, yeah, she's easy. on Facebook. She's on Facebook quite a bit. Okay. Yeah. So when she's on there, she's looking for kids, like pictures of the grandkids mm -hmm. updates on that. She's checking on her friends, probably grandkids. Right. Uh, yeah. And those are the kinds of things you want to, you want to think about who is she looking for? What kind of content is she looking for? Yeah. If you're on LinkedIn, um, people still don't want to be sold to, but they're looking for some sort of professional insight or learning experience yes, to grow. And if you're on TikTok or Instagram, people are there to unwind or find something yes. entertaining, yes. distract themselves. Yeah. And, um, you have to kind of match that energy if you're in that room. Yeah. 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 So, um, that's, that's a really important thing to take into account is, is just knowing that you can match that room. Mm -hmm. Right. And that you can, you can do that. And so we're going to talk about first, what platforms you should choose. And then we're going to talk about what we should post. Mm -hmm. So first we believe in filling one glass at a time. It could literally be a full-time job and in some organizations or for, or if you hire an outsourced, you know, social media agency, it's a big job to post on eight different, six different platforms all at once. If you decide that's your strategy and you're, you're posting to all of those, um, if you do it right, you should have unique content that fits each platform and you're not posting the same graphic across six different places. That's just that's not the way to do it. What mm -hmm. you're, what you are going to do is you're going to customize each one to match each platform. And then you're going to post it individually to all of those. That's a big job. And it's likely not one that if you're not already posting, that's not a rhythm you can just establish today, you know? So yeah. what we would say is look at, um, your customers. Where are they? What are they, what platforms are they engaging with and, or ask them or, Look, just look around. Where are they liking, commenting? Um, do you see them on Instagram more? Do you see them on LinkedIn more? Um, we have a client that's in more like rural Missouri. Um, Twitter and X didn't have as much, you know, engagement out in, in rural Missouri. That's just the reality. Yeah. Facebook and Instagram probably did. And, the, and so I would say, start with Facebook and Instagram. Um, if you have a younger audience, I would say you know, go to, go to TikTok, go to, um, if you, you have to be able to make great videos. Yeah. If you have a, a some sort of product or ex idea for content, that's particularly entertaining and eye-catching yes. TikTok or Instagram reels yes. are a, a good way to, to emphasize or to share that. Yeah. And, and if you have a more professional audience, I'd start on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. The thing is just don't, don't bite off more than you can chew because the worst thing would be to do a mediocre or terrible job on six platforms rather than doing a great job on one. Yeah. I'd rather you just do a great job on one and build that audience. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, now we're going to, we're going to, you just want to mentally take that pull. Where are your customers? What are you going to, where mm -hmm. are you going to see them? Choose one, choose two, or if you've got a team, maybe choose six. I don't, I don't care. I just think you should be wise about what you, what you can do. Yeah. So, now we're going to talk about things you should post, and we're going to just hit you with a bunch of ideas, and hopefully that'll trigger your social media content calendar. The best way to, to do this is to have a plan. Uh, instead of waking up that morning, going to work and saying, what should we post today? Having a little bit, a loose plan. Say, you know what? We're going we're gonna to try to post two times a week, so let's look through the whole month and plan out mm -hmm. a couple couple of weeks. Allows oh. your, it allows your team to get thinking yes. as they go about their day of like, that could be cool. That fits yes. what we were talking about. Yes. And uh, it, it snowballs from there. Yeah. And, and I think you'll end up making better content when mm -hmm. you're thinking ahead on that. You're like, Ooh, we really need to make that video 
this week so that it can post next Tuesday or, or yeah. whatever that looks like. Mm-hmm. So, um, first idea, share pictures and stories of real people. Uh, your customers that you've done work for are real. And here's the deal. You can tag them if they're on these social media platforms, which we just talked about, you're going to post on a platform that they're likely on, Mm -hmm. right? So uh, you want to tag them in this thing that increases the chance of not just your page audience seeing them, but their personal page audience, their profile audience seeing them as well. And um, make make it an authentic uh, picture. We have home, we have clients in the home improvement industry. It's like happy, uh, you know, picture in front of the house or I have friends who are, are realtors and that's, that's a big thing. It's like, I bought my new home with so-and-so, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, a- another thing is, uh, we've got a client who ha- sells boats or we have some in the automotive industry. Take a picture of them before they drive off the lot. They are so happy and proud to have that new boat, new truck, new whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, write write a little story about it and post that. Yeah, and encourage those people to send you photos of them. Like if you're selling boats, photos of them on the water uh, yeah. in their boat. You know, yes. having a good time. Oh yeah. Say hey, can we share this? And yes, it's a lot of content right there. I promise you, they want you to share it. And if you know, you kind of have to leave reasonable doubts so that hopefully it's of a quality that you're okay with. But honestly, yeah. with phones these days, most of the time, if the framing's right the quality is probably going to yeah. be pretty close. Everyone's already shooting in 4K. The, yes. the camera sensor does half the work and everything looks it should look, decent. Yeah, pretty good. So and if it doesn't, you don't have to post it. Yeah, you don't have to. You're, there's, you're not obligated to. So hit me with a couple more, Carter. Yeah, um, before and afters are a great thing if yeah. you're in home improvement or um, some good examples that are like just total hits on Instagram, TikTok would be like roofers, car, de- car detailers. Um, like just doing like time lapses of them cleaning like a filthy car, like power washers, things like that. Um, that is people watch that just for entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a video in my feed and it was uh, like worst roofing job ever. And it was just a roofer with a GoPro on going up to inspect a roof and showing all the ways that the previous roofer just did a terrible job. Wow. And it had like 3 million views. Wow. And, uh, people just watch this stuff, you know? So those are some, some examples. You could truthfully care less about roofs yeah like if we're being honest it but, says worst roofing job i want to see what that's yeah, about I, yeah i'm curious yeah and then i trust the guy who posted that video because he's showing me what it's here's what's be. wrong yeah and it's transparent it's authentic that's so good yeah. um big thing would be community events i would say if you're hosting them obviously you should post and invite people make the event share that all of that stuff but if you are affiliated with or want to help a local community or nonprofit event, help invite people to those things. Um, if there are nonprofits that you like to support, tell share the nonprofit's posts when they're asking for donations or they have a big event that they need to sell tickets or raffle tickets for. Be a part of that and, um, and share that. Say, hey, we love supporting Habitat for Humanity or Victory Mission here in our town. We would love for you to help support them too. Here's a link to do that. Um, that is such a powerful thing and everybody wants to be involved with that. Um, I would just make sure it's authentic, right? Mm-hmm. Don't, don't do that just for the sake of getting the publicity, but make sure you're supporting them in some way yeah, as definitely. well. Right. Um, so we talked about like animals and kids, uh, cute, cute kids, cute puppies. We have an office dog here in our office. Um, and he probably would be the most popular person in our office, right? Rowdy would, yeah. he would, he would win. Um, and so when Megan, who is Rowdy's mom, uh, comes in, everybody's like, Oh, hi Rowdy. And then it's like, and, and Hey Megan, you know, yeah. like she's following <laughs> behind like, Oh, uh, Oh, you're yeah. here too. Um, and so, uh, I remember this office. I don't remember which company it was, but I remember seeing their post. Truthfully, I don't think I remember seeing any of their posts ever before. But they had posted that a stray dog had wandered up and it had a collar on, but it didn't have like a tag. And so they had posted, hey, we found this dog. It wandered by the office. He's hanging out with us today. And it's a cute picture of the dog. That got more attention in our little area than any post they'd ever made before. Right? That's yeah. just the reality of it. People just share things and they're just, yeah. they, they care about it. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. Um, dad jokes. Memes. Um, I think a lot of businesses are scared to 
be goofy sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but if that is your personality and you're okay with doing that, it is way more connectable yeah. than anything else. Make sure the person posting your memes is the same age and generation as the customer you're trying to talk to. Mm. Um, if, if, you, if you're talking to teenagers, have a teenager making those posts. Yeah. If you're talking to people in their 60s, it's okay, okay to have a 60-year-old yeah. do it, you know. But yeah. The jokes may not very translate. Different, yeah, they're different circles uh-huh. of memes. Yes. Um, that, that you want to just kind of keep your finger on the pulse of that. Yeah. But, but I think be, be bold. Don't be afraid to, to make these posts. Mm-hmm. I think, I think uh, sometimes I've just, I've talked to a lot of business owners and they're like, oh, that's not professional. That's kind of their yeah. narrative. It's like, well, nobody really wants you to be professional. They want you to be relatable. Yeah. When you're professional, none of us go home to our families and are like, hello, you know, we don't. Yes. We, we joke around. Mm-hmm. We talk authentically. And mm-hmm. if you're willing to do that, it feels like they're getting the real you yes. and they're not getting the business side of you. Yes. And they're like, I trust that. I trust, I trust, I trust those it. folks. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. And that's a principle of all copywriting, right? Mm-hmm. You want to be relatable. You want to be that, that connecting piece. So another, another idea would be to make really bold statements. So find a, find a killer quote or say something disruptive about your industry and do those, do those plain old um, solid background white text, you know, you could do a multi-page, you know, flip through where it's just inspiring or it's strong in some way. And people are like, oh yes, that is, that's what I needed today. That's what mm-hmm. I needed to hear. Those are, those are really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. a few more quizzes and polls, um, things, uh, that could maybe help improve your product. Silly things like in this day in history, your wordle for the day, a riddle. Mm. Um, I saw a rug cleaning service that, uh, posted a picture of this rug that was just trashed. It just looked like they pulled it out of like the bottom of a lake. Yeah. And uh, it was just brown and they posted it and said, uh, what color do you think this rug will be? And then That's amazing. cut to the after of like a, you know, bright yellow rug that after they completely washed and restored it. Hmm. And um, that gets people, you know, voting on your stories, you know, when you have yellow, red, blue, green. Yeah. And um, that, that drives a lot of traffic to yeah. you, you yeah. know? It shows the algorithm that people care and it gets people waiting yes. around to see what you post next. Yes, that's exactly it. Um, team member features, showing people your team, um, the people that they may interact with if they come in and yeah. see you in person. Yeah. Uh, maybe fun facts about them. Their dogs, again, are always a hit. Mm-hmm. Um, holiday greetings, things like that, that um, give you just a, a chance to connect with people. Yeah. So the reason we're doing this is not only to connect with people. Um, if you think about Facebook's job or TikTok's job or Instagram's job, their job is to reward what people want to see. And our job as marketers is to engage with people at a level that they would want to see and engage with those things. Mm So we post these fun, interesting, relatable pieces so that one, people like them. And, um, when they interact with our post, it tells, it sends a signal back to the social media and the social media says, oh, that was a good one. Mm -hmm. And then the algorithms start to favor you and you get this momentum forward into where more people are going to start seeing you. And that's how, you know, we all know, we all imagine someday like a a viral post happening from our business page or something like that. Um, You know, statistically, that's less likely as into depending on how you define viral, a viral yeah. post, yeah. but, um, but you want it to be at least like in your small pocket viral, you mm-hmm. want it to be your people connecting with that. And when they, when you post in ways that people want, then, um, they engage with it. Then the social media increases their favor toward that post. And then it goes to more people who like it, who engage with it. And then you can see how that would, that would correspond all together. Mm-hmm. So we are constantly wanting, we are wanting to um, both reward the customer and the social media, the platform that we're on with the best possible foot forward, mm-hmm. the, those two things. Um, and if you are posting the balance, we would say at a minimum, you should be entertaining 75% of the time, three fourths of the time, three out of four posts, 
at least should be fun and have no angle. You're not trying to sell me anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe one out of those four, if not more fun, maybe one of those out of those four, you try to tell me about your offer or a new thing or connect it back to how you do a better job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, An open house or sale coming up. Yes. Or something like that. Yeah. Um, but unless you had those three authentic engaging posts before that, you didn't have my attention for the fourth one. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality. A lot of people start with number four and say, I'll sell you something and then I'll start engaging with you. Well, the selling post did not go very far, Mm -hmm. right? Because nobody's going to give that a thumbs up. But if the first three posts felt authentically selfless and entertaining and interesting, Mm -hmm. then when they see that post that says, hey, we've got a, you know, something happened in this weekend, that feels to them like, oh, this must be valuable to me in the way that those other posts were. Yeah. In a lot of the ways this relates, this is very similar or sounds very similar to SEO to me. It's very much like give the customer what they want, Mm -hmm. tell, give the platform what it wants, and then you'll be good. And so this, even when algorithmically you are making these really engaging posts over time, those platforms will also see like, hey, you're a heavy hitter. Mm -hmm. And that next post starts just a level above the last post yeah. because the last post you made did great. And then you, your floor goes up and up and up. And so mm-hmm. we want to make sure that we are doing that entertaining, uh, that entertaining all the time. Yeah. So um, we're going to hit just a couple of tools that we have here at the end um, because a lot of times these tools can help save you a ton of time. And, and so big one these days is Canva. Um, everybody's, you can get Canva on your phone. There's a, there's a web app. I think there's a downloadable, even desktop app on your computer as well. Um, Canva quickly lets you take a graphic or a video or any combination of the above. And, uh, especially with a graphic, it'll give you little templates, let you edit those things. And then you can quickly resize them for every platform so that you're giving the platform, like we said, exactly what they want. On Instagram, you get a square, maybe you get a vertical type of shot on Facebook or any, any number of that combination. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So Canva is really powerful. Um, we use that here even for, for some of our social, uh, as Frank and Maven. Um, a second one is Hootsuite is a big one or gain, or there are a number of different, these are like simul posting tools. So instead of going to Instagram, Facebook, you know, Twitter, TikTok, whatever, uh, scissor kick or whatever. No, I'm just kidding. Ping Uh, pong. Ping pong. Yeah. Uh, instead of going to each of those platforms and posting it organically, you could use one of these simul posting tools and it, um, lets you like set up and schedule your post to go out to all of them tomorrow morning or something like that. There is a downside. There is, there are studies on this, that if you go, if you share that post from one of those tools, that actually it lessens your engagement and your power. Mm. So we would recommend that if you have the time, make sure that you uh, go to each of the platforms and post them organically from the app. But if you don't have the time, I'd rather you do something rather than nothing. You know what I'm saying? So you need to save that time. And make sure and, you know, customize the same way we were talking about Canva. Customize, you know, your captions, your hashtags if you have them. Yes. So that you are appealing to each one of those um, channels that you're yeah. using, um, so that you're not just using the same topics or the, or the same language in every yes. post, yeah. uh, because it won't be shaped for that algorithm and for that platform. And that's exactly it. There's an insider language to each of these platforms. And that's why we would encourage you to, to fill one glass at a time, mm-hmm. choose a couple and do them really, really well. Because if you can't handle, uh, learning the language of each of those, you're going to miss out. You know, yeah. you're going to, you're probably going to just do a terrible job on each one. Mm-hmm. Next, uh, we talked about chat GPT. AI can help us. Tell us how, Carter. Yeah, it, it can help you with ideas. And, um, oh, I didn't think that we could post that for, you know, a, a law firm. That, that's a good idea. We can, that could be a piece yes. of regular content. Uh, just suggestions like that. Um, don't let it write your posts mm-hmm. um, because algorithms either can now or will very soon be able to sniff that out and will kind of, um, not favor you because of that. In, yeah. in addition to that, it may be a shortcut right now to have it write your your post language. Um, but if there's a lot of people using that shortcut because it's so easy, um, all of a all of a sudden you start sounding like 
everybody, everybody else. else. Yeah. And so um, you're not appealing to the algorithm or to your audience. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's a, that's true of all, you know, Carter did a wonderful episode. Is this number three for you? It's number three. This is number three. Um, so Carter did an episode on AI and the tools that, um, we've seen and we use, um, Mm -hmm. in different ways, but the biggest, probably the biggest takeaway of that was, um, that AI really shouldn't be writing your final copy because it has, AI has no personality. Mm -hmm. AI completely blends in. And so, um, our goal is to create an authentic, real, almost human-like personality. That's how you create that tribal bond. Go listen to that episode yeah. if you haven't. When you have that real personality that attracts some and probably repels others. Yeah, it's specific. It's very specific. You want to be specific. Yeah, and uh, AI will help you get ideas. That's the best the best thing it's for, I would mm-hmm. say, in this, in this area. Another one is uh, CapCut. We use... Um, you can edit videos. Um, Nate, the camera guy, uses CapCut for some of our stuff as well. Um, you can literally cut up videos in in mm-hmm. CapCut, but you can also add captions and things like that um, to do more like TikTok style or YouTube Shorts or you know all of yeah. those. So and it's pretty automated. If you're someone who doesn't feel comfortable with video editing and stuff, CapCut's where you want to start. Yeah, it's got a lot of great options for for people who are just getting the ball rolling. Yeah. And that's just a, that's an app on your phone. Mm-hmm. So really easy. You don't have to have a high speed computer or anything like that. You have one in your pocket. So mm-hmm. there you go. So that's what we've got for you guys today on posting for social media for your business. I'd encourage you to check out some of these tools that we've mentioned. Uh, go listen to that. You know, I know you're listening on a 1.25 speed. Uh, so go back to the types of posts that we just mentioned. And let those trigger not just those literal examples we gave, but let those trigger other ideas. Sit with your team, come up with different ideas, make a schedule. That is probably one of the most important things here would be to plan ahead so that you're not making it, you're not making today's post today. Uh, That's how you create excellent content um, is maybe thinking ahead. Sometimes the spontaneous stuff, the real thing, the stray dog that shows up at your office is the best thing you can do. But a lot of times, thinking ahead, making high quality content is the kind that's going to be engaged with, right? Yeah. I'd also say just give your people room to have fun. Yeah. You know, make it fun. Yes. Don't don't overthink it too much. Just get stuff out there and uh be yourself. Yeah. Just be yourself. Be yourself. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Dr. Carter. Uh thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed this, please hit the subscribe button. Um we've gotten a lot of people have given us such great reviews and we would Love it. If you would hit five stars, write a little review, tell about how this has affected your marketing, how this has helped your business grow. Um, That is why we do this uh, and we love to do it. Mm -hmm. So thanks so much for having me in the host chair today. Shout out to Brandon, uh, wherever you are. Thank you. Uh, I know where he is, but I don't, you don't. Yeah. So um, thank you for letting me warm the seat while you're gone. Um, If you have any questions, you can send them to mavenmonday at frankandmaven.com. We would love to answer them right here on the podcast. And we have a nice queue of those that we are constantly working through to try to help your uh, marketing grow. So we'll be here every Monday answering your real life marketing and advertising questions because marketers who can't teach you why are just a fancy lie. See you next time. (laughs) 